All right, y'all, it's the morning mess. How you do? It's Joey Boy. Hello, Natasha Castles. And it's Anish. In studio, we got a good friend of ours returning back. Uh, it seems like the Valley of the Sun is one of his favorite cities to visit. It is. <laughs> we got from the Shark Tank, we got Damon John in the building. Yeah! All right, thank you. Do Thank you, you do you take a uh, compliment if we call you everyone's favorite shark or is that a uh... yeah I would think that's a compliment I mean okay. it, you know it's the truth um, you know for most people because right. I'm the best shark on the show but uh, yeah. <laughs> who's the second favorite shark <laughs> uh, it's really tough everybody everybody just has their own person that they're really drawn to and Cuban probably is the best one because he he was popular before the show right you know so um but you know every, every, everybody and then Robert he's just so pretty. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. And then they, they like they like the buttholes too, like Kevin too. Sometimes because he just hits you with the hammer. So you know it, it's fun. Yeah. And these they like the buttholes too. I, I mean, hey, I'm not opposed to any of that. Congratulations. <laughs> I mean, speaking yeah. of the show. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of the show, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you guys got an award. I think it was the Critics' Choice. You got best structured Critics reality choice. television show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank, thank God. And uh, going into uh, you know we're we're still in season now. Um, and then we're gonna start shooting our tenth year. Wow. You know? Who do you make the most money? Which shark do you make the most money with? Because I know you guys collabo sometimes. Um, you know, you don't know because a lot of these these are real businesses, and sometimes they don't they don't they don't grow until five years in. Got you. you. Know? So you, I think Lori probably makes the most. Um, I like Lori a lot because oh, she yeah. she already she already had a system of buying cheap plastic crap and putting it on air. <laughs> QVC. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Immediately, so she just plugs it right into the system, man. But you know. She's a she's a queen of slinging some uh, you know she plastic does. stuff, man. She's best. She's yeah, the best. she does. Uh, is this your favorite season so far? Yeah, every season becomes my favorite because you know we got a lot of new sharks, guest sharks coming. Yeah, in. I saw so, that. You know, you know, I get to fight with uh, you know Richard Branson and Bethany, and you know the beauty of it is that. You know, when you when you sit next to Kevin and you hear him say you're dead to me ten thousand times, you kinda like, yeah, whatever. But when you get a new person with new philosophies next to you, you get to argue with them and even though it's in the best interest of the entrepreneur, you get to lock horns with new people. I love it. Yeah. I love this show, man. It's one of those guilty pleasures of just like whether you know we heard um someone was was that you doing that you were sick? Yeah, I was just talking to my friend Dory here. She's like, I was sick and I was been watching Shark Tank. I go, funny you say that. We got, she's like, <laughs> oh what? my god! And great. she just happens to be passing by this morning. I love it. Um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a family favorite because I can watch that with my 13 year old yeah. and the wife, and we all try to guess like, all right, who's is this a, a crap product or people gonna pick it up? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's the number one show on network. Watch with uh, kids five to 15 and, and parents and kids together. So, oh. um, you know, it's it's friendly and you can learn from it and you can have fun. And then the high school, I mean, the college kids like to you know they, they like to do drinking games you know we're gonna take a shot really? every time somebody's out oh you know, we so. should do that <laughs> you were, I was no, like oh Joey you're 13 year old well I mean the demographic's not a surprise especially with this huge entrepreneurial yeah. uh, ambition that we have with social media and whatnot mm -hmm. uh, is there kind of like a guideline that you would say for those young ambitious sharks I guess you would say uh, you know the, the guideline will well you know you, you gotta is you there gotta, one you gotta yeah the, it, it, it's gonna be the same but different from you know different times the fundamentals is you have to build a community no matter what and don't think there's some easy way to do it and money's gonna be the way to do it you have mm. to build a community it's just it's, listen it's just like sitting with with you guys you know people come and tune into you because they relate to you and you've built a community that will follow you no matter what and that's the same with an entrepreneur whether you're standing on the corner like I did selling hats or you're selling bean pie someplace you got to build a community that's the, that's the number one thing i feel like if you're just tuning in we got damon john uh author shark tank ceo founder of fubu with his boys um I, what was i gonna ask I, you know what i i feel like more and more everyone like you said as a community i see a lot of people trying to start clothing line where you came right. from how much do you really need to start up a clothing line? Because everybody got a t-shirt line of clothing. How much do you really need marketing and promotions and stuff? What's your startup, would you suggest? Again, it, it, you have to find people that will die for your product and be ambassadors and you don't have to pay them. So when I came out, you know, it, 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 what we did was we made a bunch of shirts for just the big guys. 
right? Because the cool kids, they'll 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 wear a shirt, you know, today and be on something new. The big guys had only Rochester Big and Tall to go to. So when I gave them a big shirt, and usually those big guys were bodyguards or somebody who was standing outside the club mm-hmm. or, or whatever the case is, who were big and they were billboards, they'd wear that shirt 15 times to every one time a kid wore it. And they were big billboards. And I only put out 100 shirts. And for one year, there was about 100 of those shirts. Before I know it, all the artists started asking me, say, yo, man, why you ain't giving me a shirt? Right. You know, because they felt like I was neglecting them. But I built this community of these big guys, you know, and, you know, because African Americans are big. Right. And that, was, that, was, <laughs> that, was, that was an easy place for me to start. So, um, you know, I built my community that way. Other people will build communities in totally different ways. Who was one? Who was the first celebrity that you dressed? Was it LL that embraced it? No, and- no. It was I was home, I was sleeping, and I woke up, and then I, I you know, and I, I looked outside, and it was old dirty bastard was in my driveway. Wow, oh God, I was just yeah, saying old, old dirty bastard was in my driveway. What? And he, he, he said, "Yo, I heard about you," and then he came inside, and then he wore it, and then I think the second one after that was uh, Moni Love, and then I think um, Method Man wore it in the ice cream video, the hat and the ice cream video. LL would probably be about the eighth celebrity to wear it. Okay, okay. Yeah. ODB, that's pretty, that's, that's one yeah. of my favorites, yeah. Now, would you suggest uh, strategies that, like, uh, what is it, Supreme, that their strategy of just kind of like the the supply and demand, where they only kind of did a limited amount of stuff and kind of just watch the hype beast go for it? Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to have too much inventory. You do want to do a limited, uh, uh, you know, amount of stuff. I'm glad you asked. I'm doing a limited run right now of uh, <laughs> Puma and FUBU collaboration. <laughs> we got some cameras in here. There goes hey. my Puma sweater. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I like so I got those. The on that. Uh-huh. So how um, did that? How did they reach out to you? How did that work out? The yeah, collabo. You know, they reached out to us and, and they said they wanted to do a limited run, and it was an honor to me because it was the 50th anniversary of the Puma Suede, and it's the 25th anniversary of Fubu, and the first time we ever did a collaboration with a major company. But to think about it, you know, Puma's probably one of the reasons why I got into the business because, uh, you know, when when uh, you can only hear rap in New York at uh, midnight when I was around 10 years old on That's the radio, crazy. and I wasn't able to go out. So I would just sit there and dye my Pumas, you know, every weekend listening to rap music and because I wanted everybody to think I had a new pair of shoes mm-hmm. every wow. week when I went to school. So um, it's one of the real, the main reasons why I had this love for fashion. I said, well, maybe I can do this myself. So uh, it's really great collaboration. I'm excited about it. Came in full circle. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. It's, it's cool to see like these 90s brands being like resurrected and like everyone's going for like Pumas, FUBU. Yeah. All that stuff is highly appreciated now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, you and see like cats like Bruno. You see the new Bruno. That's a 90s sound, that new Jack Swing sound. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they bring out the brands of the 90s and stuff yeah. like that. Yep. That we need something with FUBU. We need one of these new artists. Which artist would you want to come out? You know, I remember when LL did that Gap commercial with uh-huh. the Fubu for us by us. Yeah. Which artist would you want to like embrace and start rocking Fubu through their video and at the Grammys? And mm. I don't know. I, 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 it would have to be an artist that I love. You know, his music and or her music. Uh, you know, I I I I'm a big fan of uh, Chris Brown and Drake and okay. um, Kendrick would be great, of course, right? Yeah. Twenty One Savages. Uh, you yeah. Know, some of those guys. Nice. Rihanna's working with Puma. Yeah, Rihanna, Rihanna's something. working with Puma. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. You know, Riri, um, you're also, I don't know when the hell you sleep. You're also, you also got a book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got a show, you got this Puma yeah. thing, you got a book, the fourth book. Rise and Grind. Rise and Grind. Rise oh, and how grind. is this different than the last one? The uh, last time you were here, yeah. you did the Power Broke. The last one was Power Broke. It was trying to give people ways to start businesses and understand that you don't need money to make money. When okay. over 65% of the top uh, wealthiest people in the world uh, are self-made men and women, that means they were all broke. Right, they didn't have anything, mm-hmm. but you know, a lot of people were saying, "Okay, now I understand that theory, and I've been working hard, but I haven't been able to get anywhere." And I've been saying, "Okay, well, now I need to show you rise and grind." I've studied in this book uh, fifteen really, really successful people, but what do they do the first ninety minutes of their day? What do they do the last ninety minutes oh, of the day? Wow. How can they meet? be more proficient on a daily basis. I like that. Yeah, so I started to see that all of them do the same thing, they just do it in different ways. Really? Right? So, a lot of tricks in the book or, or ways they go about it is, many of them will wake up, they will not answer any emails for the first hour. Oh, because well. when you answer an email, you give away all your power to everybody else. They'll send out emails. So my friend Chris Sacker will say he looks at his inbox as his uh, defense, his outbox as his offense. They will not look at any social media for the first hour of the day because oh, 
out there, you're going to be late to work, right? There goes that. There goes me. Well, that's a habit everyone has. Yeah, exactly. But what happens? You look at it, and everybody else is skinnier, sexier, beautiful, and you know they got the this great life when they're all just as screwed up as everybody else. But you start getting this social media depression. Instead, they go out there and they start to schedule time. They're going to be with their family, right? They start to set their goals and what they're going to do. And they're very, very selfish. Successful people, inclusive of myself, we're very, very selfish because we can't add value to the team unless we're one of the best players, right? Mm -hmm. It's like saying, well, Michael Jordan had went to everybody else's practice. Now he practiced his ass off until he can then come mm -hmm. and be a better uh, aspect to the team. And a lot of things you may seem as cold, like scheduling time with your daughter or scheduling time with to call your mother, right? They schedule it. Why? Because if not, you're in everybody else's schedule. Mm -hmm. You're on the train time. The the time the train leaves, you have to get to work and go to that meeting. You're on a conference call this time. You have to be at a reservation at a at a you know restaurant mm -hmm. at eight thirty, whatever it is. And then you never get to seeing your family and being with those people. So they're very selfish in in, in very uh, uh, critical ways that help them uh, you know grow. And I have everybody in here from Carlos Santana to Catherine Zeta Jones. Wow. But I also have a kid in there that you probably will never hear of or you, you might have. His name is Kyle, Kyle Maynard. He um, was born with no arms and no legs and army crawled Mount Kilimanjaro. I did wow. hear about the So yeah. the discipline that that guy has. Wow. And, and, I, and another good point about that guy is he also was a, he, he also was a champion wrestler. He lost his first 40 mm -hmm. matches. Oh, right? okay. But when he started winning, they said he had an unfair advantage. They said because he has no arms and no legs, if he's wrestling at 120, he really would be 140. So what? now he's pinning people at a lower weight class because mm -hmm. he has no arms, no legs. So think about how people are going to hate on you no matter what. Who's mm -hmm. going to hate on a man with no arms and no legs? Seriously. Right? So, so a lot of these things are in the book on how you could be more proficient on a daily basis. Is that one of the things that you thought of when thinking of the people to, to interview? Because there are some surprising names in here, like Catherine Zeta-Jones, for example, but like Wendy Williams. Yeah. Like and Tyler, the creator. Were you specific in who you picked for the book, or I, I was very specific because I actually didn't start wanting to write a book. I wanted to go out there and said, you know what? After nine years on Shark Tank, sixty companies in my portfolio, Fubu. I have a two-year-old. You know what? I need to be more proficient in my life. The Damon John at twenty, uh, you know, acted a very different way. So I need some some angles uh, mm. at forty-eight on how to be more proficient. And um, I that's how I started, and then I started to understand a lot of things and even like taking care of my health I didn't ask too many questions about my health I I went and got checkups and everything else but throughout this book I found out I had a had something on my thyroid I find out it was cancer that I had in my thyroid throughout understanding how to take care of my health and be selfish I don't have it anymore but it was because I was checking out this uh, you know these interviews with people and learning all these tricks on how to be more proficient and health was one of them because we don't talk about that in business but health is the most important aspect of business but you'll never hear that on Shark Tank Wow. Right. You yeah, just changed yeah. my life. Damon John just changed my life. Right? <laughs> I mean, you see the health being a, a top priority more and more like people like Kevin Hart always showcases himself, you know, yeah. working out while he's on tour and stuff. It's important right. um, for you. How do you uh, take on time management with being so busy? Yeah, so again, it goes back to scheduling, it goes back to setting goals, and then you know, there's there's like three or four ways you can set goals in a book. Some people will say, listen, I write down all the things I love, I write down all the things I hate. Everything I hate, I try to outsource and or get people away from me that are creating that hate. Mm -hmm. and other people will say, I'll do my goals for time management, I'll write a list of A, have to do, B, would like to do. I can get overwhelmed if I put them all together. I keep knocking down the A's and the minute that I get the A's out of the way, the B's now become the A's and I mm -hmm. replace them. So there's probably about a dozen ways to help you with time management. And of course, the email thing and all that, that's extremely important. You know, 15 years ago or whatever the case is, I mean, emails were out then, but if you were walking around with mail, would you open it all day long? No. Or would it's, you set a time from 4.30 to 5.30, sit down and open your mail? Yeah, it's one of those subconscious things that you don't know, yeah. notice it taking over. Exactly. That's awesome. Wow. I follow you on the gram that I'm going to stop checking as soon as I wake up because that's my, <laughs> my fault. You have a great relationship with your daughter, yeah. with your youngest daughter. Yeah, I love that because I'm a father of a one-year-old, a two-year-old, a 13-year-old. I got a lot of kids. Selling me, yeah. Yeah. Um, I hear Damon's one of his superpowers besides making money. His dad jokes. I heard this guy oh, oh my God. has a dad joke or three. Yeah. I'm known on the show as dad jokes, but I heard you... How, you have dad I jokes. I wonder who told you that. 
<laughs> all, right, all right, listen, you're, you, I mean, you know, because, listen, I have a 24-year-old and a 19-year-old, and they usually hang up the phone when I tell them these jokes, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm warming up for my daughter Minka. So there you I'm, go. Have you heard the joke about uh, butter? Butter. Yeah. Have not. Well, it must not be spreading. Oh, my oh my there you God. go. Come on. Oh my I know somebody listening right now. So <laughs> take them, take them. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> I love dad jokes. All right. I, I love have a whole folder of email of dad jokes. <laughs> dad jokes are the best. Yeah. All right, listen. What's the what's the what's the the most crunk bathroom to go to? What? Uh, Where? A little John. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that. One. <laughs> Come on, you gotta, get out of here. you gotta leave it. Come that on, one. where you going, bro? Where you going? Where you going? Do you have a butthole joke? Come here, Anish. Anish, she has a butt joke. Here. Come on, there's no jokes about a butt. I don't have a butthole joke. I don't think. <laughs> that is I gotta, awesome. I go deep to think about that. You one. really hey. have me. Th- <laughs> <laughs> There's good. the joke, thanks. He's good. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> you know, uh, Natasha came up with a great question this week that had us thinking. Um, you were talking about there was a percentage of people that said they would they would not take fifty thousand oh. dollars and they rather what? Would you rather take fifty thousand dollars or a dinner with Jay Z? And I chose a dinner with Jay-Z because it's based off the experience. You don't know what kind of conversation would come off of it and Yeah. I don't Everyone else chose the 50,000. And if I can say like I am the biggest fan of his wife ever and I still was just like no. I would right. take the 50k. Right, right, right. Right, right. Is there anybody Damien Jean that you would spend $50,000 to have dinner with? Most of them are probably dead now. Yeah, but it would have been Mandela, you know. Manda, you would spend the fifty. Mandela Gandhi. Well, fifty to me and fifty to you is different. So let's say five hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it would be Mandela. Mandela, five hundred k. You know, I had the honor of of of, of having dinner with Muhammad Ali. So oh, it wow. wouldn't be my, oh, maybe maybe if Michael was alive with Prince. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. You never met Prince? I did. You did. Yeah, okay. I met Prince and Mike. Um, yeah. So, but I, I, and Prince, I I knew a little bit, but I. Uh, I it would have been those guys if I didn't meet them, you know, and I didn't know them a little mm-hmm. bit. I did say I wouldn't do I met Jay-Z one time, so I was like, it's unfair to ask me that because I've met him one time, but I probably would. I probably would, honestly. $50,000. Uh, I would rather take a dinner with uh, Barack, your homie, Barack Obama. Yeah, Barack. I probably would do that one. That's Barack probably too. the only one I would do. It would be somebody who has, who has changed the world yeah. in some sense or another. You know, um, Steve Jobs. You know what I mean? Oh, when, you, right. when you when you have a dinner with somebody, the insight of somebody to move, you know, seven billion people in a direction. You know, because you think about Muhammad Ali. At one time, he was the most uh, recognizable person on the planet, Absolutely. next to the Pope and Mickey Mouse, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> True. so you know, those are the type of people I would like. I mean, I respect Jay. Uh, you know, I um, I don't even know Jay that well. The, you know, our, inter- our interactions have been amazing when I when I have been around. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know if I would spend that type of money. Fifty k. That's crazy. Hey, what's going on with twenty twenty? Your boy Cuban, he's out, right? He's not going to run for twenty twenty. I don't know. I, I told him he shouldn't, um, shouldn't. but I, I don't think he's going to run. Are you uh, acquaintances with Oprah? Do you know Oprah? No, I no? Don't know, no, I don't know Oprah. Uh, because she just pulled out. She's like, there's no way she would do it. I mean, who, wants, who wants that job? I mean, look, I, 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 that's I, a, that's that's a hard, no matter what we I think, would, that's a hard, hard job, I would, man. If I had a friend or a family member, I said, don't do that, man. No, I don't, I don't, and I don't care who's in office now or tomorrow. That is, like, I, you know, I, I was part of, you know, uh, I was ambassador for uh, President Barack. I don't wish that on anybody. It's a very hard job. You know, people are dying every minute. I mean, think about all right. the hurricanes that happen and all the racial stuff. And I mean, it's very hard. You no about, you're talking about s- scheduling your time. Yeah, I, I oh mean, my, my calendar. Uh, do you think his wife should run? you think Michelle should take a stab at it? Um, probably, yeah, because you know what? She's already dealt it. Right. Dealt with it, right? She's already serviced, uh, you know, the people and, 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 and us. And she it's normal to her, right? Mm-hmm. I think that she could do it, yeah. I'm kind of waiting on that. Because the a lot of people, be the, yeah, I th- I think so too. The show be amazing. And handle it with grace. Yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. Yeah. So right. we have uh, we have uh, the book. Um, you're coming back to Phoenix on the the 13th. I'm coming back on the 13th. I'll be doing some book signings out there. We have the book out now. It's called Rise and Grind to Make People More Proficient. I think that we're going to give away uh, Damon on Demand. One of my uh, you know my curriculums is a thousand dollar curriculum, and um, you know you guys are going to give one away to some. Who texts in the shark? One word, the shark, to four four two two two. 
the shark to 44222. It's an eight hour digital curriculum that means that uh, on how to open a business and run a business and scale a business. So, uh, you know, tomorrow, if we're talking about uh, Insta Story and how to maximize converting, uh, you know, your sales on Insta Story, and they say that changes and there's a new form, we just automatically upload a new hour of new information on there, just like an app. Very so cool. you can keep learning. So it's eight hours. So get, you know, obviously, hopefully somebody will win it to change an entrepreneur's life or, yeah. or help somebody. Wow. Now, is there any chance uh, of this book covering like digital space with these interviews uh, that you have in here? You know, you are so beautiful. I mean, you've been asking me the perfect questions. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's an audio book, but we also have a podcast out now, too. Oh, My podcast cool. is number two right now, I think, in business. Wow. And I uh, interview a lot of amazing people that e in the Gary book and Man. people who are not even in the book. Gary Vee's on there with his potty mouth. Um, you <laughs> know, wow, I love him. Tyler, the creator, all, See, these, all yep. these amazing people. Carlos Santana, Catherine Zeta-Jones, a lot of really amazing people are in the book. Oh, my friend Nelly Galan, she's like the Tyler Perry of the Latin market. She is a producer over 800 TV shows. Uh, she's in the book for all the Latinos out there and mm -hmm. she shows how, you know, being in this country, uh, she had to overcome a lot of things and how she's just massive, like she's a beast. She's uh, she's an amazing woman. So, so many amazing people in the book. That's awesome. Very cool. I could stay here for eight hours right. just talking to you, right. man. Yeah, I really, you, no, seriously, in all seriousness, you got me rethinking how to rewire myself on the whole, uh, the first hour and the take last time hour. For yourself, yeah, man. yeah. Take time for yourself in the beginning of the day and you push out information, get everybody else working and everybody else caring about your problems. Don't care about theirs. <laughs> wow, this is a show, so we gotta get there. I ain't replied to none of y'all. You're here for me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for uh, Damon John, y'all. Damon John, the building. Thank you very much. Yes, sir.